Hello everyone, Little Wolf here. Welcome to the prediction episode of the Chaos Report for the Blight Challenge League. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the upcoming Challenge League and I'll be providing my personal predictions on unique items, div cards, other new items and potential Atlas strategies that will likely see huge popularity during the Blight League. As always, do keep in mind that these are educated guesses or predictions and as such they might not be entirely accurate. Furthermore, I might miss a thing or two that seem obvious to many and for that I apologize, it's hard to cover everything after all. If I do miss something you think is important, leave it in the comments down below. In conclusion, invest at your own risk. And with that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump right in. As our first segment, we'll be taking a quick peek at some of the currencies that you should keep an eye on for this following release week and the Blight League overall. Of course, as per usual, we have to talk about Exalted Orbs very first. In the past league, Exalted Orbs have seen some of the highest average prices ever recorded. This was likely due to the overabundance of easily accessible currency drops from the Legion League mechanic. For this league, we are not entirely certain just how much additional loot will drop, so I'll hold off on making any predictions in terms of price for these. For the start of the league, Exalted Orbs will, as per usual, be the absolute best way to stock up on currency early on. If you are unfamiliar, at the beginning of every league, aka for the first 10 to 20 hours, Exalted Orbs usually go for about 20 to 30 chaos, slowly rising to about 50 to 60 chaos on the first day. As such, if you are able to race through the levering process and make it to maps very early on, you will be able to spam chaos recipes back to back, which will grant you basically the equivalent of an Exalted Sharp recipe every time you use it. For players that get lucky enough to drop one of those early on, do keep these prices in mind. It is only worth selling your exalts early on if you are confident in your ability to make up the currency that was quote unquote lost during that time frame. As an example, if you sell your exalt for 20 chaos early on, you will have to be certain that you can make at least 30 to 40 chaos in the first day as a direct result of selling that exalt for maps, equipment, or other things. Otherwise, it would be better to sit on it for a few days and wait for the prices to increase. A currency that I do feel confident in making predictions for is the Alteration Orb. Similar to the Exalted Orb, these bad boys have seen their highest price ever in the previous league. This was due to the abundance of crafted equipment using the Alteration, Regal and Annulment method. This will likely continue in the next league as well. With the addition of new crafting bases, such as the Convocation Wand for Summoners and the continued importance for melee characters, it is highly probable that Alteration Orbs will continue to be very expensive, comparatively to very previous leaks. Whether or not we'll see similar prices to Legion will entirely depend on the drops of the Blight mechanic, as well as how many people will decide to still go for melee-focused builds, as those are the main abusers of the Alteration Orb crafting process to get their weapons. Most other archetypes usually prefer to go with fossils instead. If Alteration Orbs reach such high prices again, Remember to add lower tier jewelry to your loot filter so you can sell them for extra alteration shards in every map. A currency we have never covered before on the Chaos Report, the Chance Orb, will likely see a huge increase comparatively to last league. This is due to the addition of the Nemesis mod on the Zana map device. This allows players to chance spam leather belts in the hopes of getting their beloved Headhunter a unique belt. Additionally, with the changes to the Blasphemous Grasp, which will potentially be a very popular item in this league, we might see a similar situation to the shaped Call of the Brotherhood, as players will now require Elderbase unique items to make full use of the Blasphemous Graph's unique gauntlets. As a result, make sure to keep an eye on this currency, as you might have forgotten it existed since last league, considering its prices were absolutely abysmal. Similar reasoning applies to the Ancient Orbs in this league. They can equally be used to chance for headhunter belts, if you might, as well as fix potential elder base uniques that might have gotten the wrong unique chance. As these are always quite expensive, even in, even in leagues that do not feature the Nemesis Zana mod, they are likely to see quite a price bump for this league comparatively to Legion. One thing that might counteract these prices, however, is the fact that the Harbinger Zana mod is also returning this league. We'll be keeping an eye on the Ancient Orbs throughout the league here on the Chaos Report, so we'll be able to give a more accurate prediction once next week rolls around, and we've seen a bit of how the meta evolves and how many players are taking advantage of the Ancient Orbs in general. With those three currencies covered, let's move on to our unique item watch list. I'll be taking a look at the unique items that will either be very worthwhile to use that 
people might miss, as well as take a look at unique items that will likely have their price increase by a large amount comparatively to previous leaks. The intent behind the watchlist is to create a small list of unique items to check up on every week in order to gauge specific parts of the current leaks meta, as well as providing a starting point for players to get into the economy through unique item farming or trading. This time around, it is a lot harder to come up with a concise list of unique items to watch, as we're not simply looking at one particular playstyle, but rather multiple, completely different ones that oftentimes don't even share a single item in between them. Contrasting that to last league, where all we had to keep in mind was melee related builds for the most part, this will be a lot more of a challenge to get right. As such, feel free to comment on items down below if you'd like to see them added to the future watch lists, as I might not remember to add specific items for every playstyle in this league. First up, as always, the two jewels we've loved seeing since last league, Tempered Flesh and Transcendent Flesh. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I know you're gonna be saying, but Luna, they were nerfed, brother, the strength clusters are gone. Well, yes, that is indeed correct. GGG has also updated the gems to now give 7% increased critical strike multiplier, instead of the previous 5%. You are correct in saying that these jewels will not be much of a no-brainer as last league, and will likely not retain their insane prices as a result. However, they are still used in the same socket slot, worth 56% crit multiplier each. Considering that a perfectly rolled 4 socket crit multi-jewel will usually cost you many many exalted orbs and give a less crit multiplier, this should still be a very valuable choice for a ton of characters around the marauder slash duelist area. If you weren't playing last league, these jewels are only available through the Temple of Atsawatl, aka Alvis Master Missions. You will also require a vial of transcendence to upgrade the tempered flesh into the transcendent flesh. As such, keep an eye on the prices for the vials as well, as last league it was extremely profitable to simply buy the tempered flesh and the vial and combine them in the T3 sacrifice altar to get a transcendent flesh. Prices for this one will very likely drop, as most players will likely be playing on the opposite side of the skill tree this time around, which automatically nullifies any potential for these jewels to be used by them. As such, We'll keep an eye on it for a while to see how the meta progresses, but this was mainly an addition meant as a PSA to all my fellow melee purists that these jewels are absolutely worthwhile still. Moving on to a returning fan favorite flask, the Bottled Faith. With the re-edition of the Synthesis boss encounters, this monster of a flask is also back in the mix. With its rarity being bumped into the stratosphere due to only spawning on very rare Zana unique missions and its likely very high demand, this flask could easily become the most expensive flask in the game, barring the Soul Ripper of course. Especially with the addition of critical strike scaling for ailments, this flask could see play on an absolute metric ton of builds this league, increasing the potential damage of not just hit based abilities, but also damage over time ailments by a large degree. As it was already very popular back in Synthesis, I don't see a reason to believe that it will be any different this time around. As a result of this popularity, Zana Master Missions might show to have a large premium this league around as well, so plan accordingly. Following that, I would like to recommend keeping an eye on the Primordial Jewels. Specifically the Primordial Harmony Jewel is always popular and usually goes for a decent amount of chaos in any league. However, this time around, with all the Summoner and Golem Monster changes coming in, it is very likely we'll see a large increase in Golem Monsters throughout the league, drastically rising the demand for these jewels. Luckily for us, the Divination card, the Primordial, gives us a convenient access to an easy farming setup, as this league, all of the maps that can drop this are pre t 11 many of which are even in white maps. As such, it might be worthwhile to start farming this div card during the first few hours and days of the league, as many golem monsters will likely want to get the jewel setups done as soon as possible, and it won't cost you an arm and a leg to set up a simple farm on any of the lower level maps. My recommendations for this particular method would be T1 Wharf, as it is easily accessible right from the get-go, I mean, it's a tier 1, and will also provide the possibility to drop the right of elements as well as lucky connections to gather some additional currency along the way as well. T5 Grotto, as a bit more high level option, also features the right of elements as well as the loyalty div cards. 
Additionally, Karato has always been a very good map to run due to the amount of monsters that spawn in it. Furthermore, once you get your first yellow shaper orb, you can easily make an infinite sustained grotto setup as it only has one connecting T6. T6 geode is another option that features the right of elements. However, this one also features buried treasure which will let you kickstart your delve supply for the league. And lastly, T9 waterways. Probably the best option early on if you can manage to get here in the first one or two days. The waterways map features not only both the right of elements and the primordial, but will also allow you to farm humility cards on the side. With the immense prices of tabula rasas at the beginning of every league, this will be the premier choice for farming purposes early on. Furthermore, waterways is located in one of the bone helmet areas on the atlas, allowing you to farm the likely expensive minion helmet bases. One of the two bone helmet locations will also likely be replaced by the new convocation wand bases so you might get lucky and will be able to farm those in addition to all the previously mentioned things as well. It will be a lot harder to sustain than the previous examples, but it will definitely be worth the effort. Next up, the Devouring Diadem. This helmet has seen moderate popularity in the past leagues and has always shown a certain indentation towards being useful for summoners and casters alike. Especially with the changes to mana recovery, Many people are opting to go for an Eldritch Battery setup, and as such, this helmet would be a prime choice to save some passive points. It is only available through the Katarina Mastermind encounter in Betrayal League, and as such, usually, has a rather moderate supply. The Mastermind fight has had its rewards drastically increased, however, which might lead to more players attempting it and thusly potentially increasing the supply for this item. The demand, however, will likely still be higher. Modern investment here is advised. Keep an eye on it and make your own decisions on if you want to farm it or not. An item that has not really seen much play in a very long time is coming up now. The Tremor Rod. This mind specific staff has seen drastic changes in the 3.8 patch. Removing the less damage multiplier as well as the mind placement speed has put this staff into a very interesting position. With the mind rework favoring sequences of explosions, being able to detonate mines twice, if they count towards the sequence, would be a huge asset. Similarly, this staff now also provides plus two gem levels for any spells you carry, as well as being a seven link to begin with. Lots of power for mind builds. It will likely all come down to whether or not the second detonation of the Tremorod counts towards the sequence. If it does, this thing will be insane. Our penultimate item on the list will be the Binoise Kitchen Knife. With all the poison and ailment damage increases that were added in this league, this unique dagger will likely find itself a new home in a lot of players' main hands. Featuring an amazing portfolio of poison proliferation, as well as a very decent amount of physical damage and dot scaling, in addition to great crit, this dagger is going to be a favorite among many. Furthermore, it being the only unique slaughter knife in the game, there will likely be a large demand for Elder Chance Binos knives due to our last item on the list, which might lead to a shaped Call of the Brotherhood situation. As such, keep your Chance Orbs and Scouring Orbs ready and potentially pick up an Elder Slaughter Knife or two along the way. It might be worthwhile. The last item on the list, which is causing the Elder Base unique craze mentioned briefly before, is the Blasphemous Grasp Unique Gloves. GG has decided that they like the Oblivion Shroud and its very unique build around me feature and has added it to these gloves as well. Instead of requiring shaper items however, this one requires elder items. It'll grant you a 5% more multiplier to all of your ailments. This includes poison as well as burning and bleeding and as such can be used with many different builds. Considering that it occupies a glove slot, this will be the largest damage increase possible for any of those mentioned builds if you manage to get close to a full set of elder items. There will likely be many more unique items that will be extremely expensive as Elder Bases as a result of this, if many people decide to go for ailment heavy builds. It is impossible to 100% predict the meta, of course, so invest with care. As for this item itself, I don't foresee a gigantic leap in price, as they're not exactly a rare drop, however, they will very likely be more expensive than in any other league before, so plan accordingly. Now. Moving on to our third segment for this video, the good old meta predictions. 
I predict that a lot of the player base will divide themselves upon summoning builds and ailment builds, as those are the archetypes presented by GGG. We'll likely see a larger amount of players gravitating towards attack-based poison builds than something like skeletons, as summoner builds are simply not as popular due to the playstyles and ARPGs in general. As a result, we'll likely be seeing more shadow-based classes, such as the newly reworked assassin, rather than something like the necromancer. However, as minion builds oftentimes don't have any unique items to strive for, we might be interested in tailoring our crafting towards those instead. Despite likely being a smaller percentage of players, they'll require a larger amount of specifically crafted rare items. Items to look out for include, but aren't limited to, Bone Helmets and Elder Bone Helmets, Convocation Wands, high level 82 plus Ghastly Eye Jewels, as well as high level two-handed staves with minion gem levels on it. For the Assassins and Ailment characters, there are more options on the unique table, so we'll likely not be able to craft too many rare items for them for now. However, I'll keep you up to date in the next episode, once we see how the first week pans out. If there's a large percentage difference between the player numbers, we'll take a closer look at the ailment based crafting options. As for the Atlas analysis, I would recommend doing your own research to figure out what is best for you and your playstyle. However, I'll provide you here with a few different Atlas strategies for the first week, depending on your speed. For slower players that will likely take at least one or two days to get to maps, I would recommend Alkin going in Tier 2 Excavation maps, as they drop the Scarab Divination cards. Tier 4 Arachnid Tombs, as, as far as I know, they do drop the Nurse Divination card. T6 Arsenal, which can drop Exalted Orb and Chaos Divination cards. These maps are all infinitely sustainable once you've gained your first Shaper Orbs, as they all only have one higher tier map connected to them. To set up the Infinite Sustain, Simply unfinish, or never finish in the first place, all other maps of the same tier, and then use your Shaper Orb on one connected map that is higher. As an example, you would use your Shaper Orb on T3 Mausoleum if you wanted infinite Alk and Go sustain for excavation. For faster players that will reach high yellow or red maps in 2 or 3 days and are wanting to get some recommendations for the Shaper or Elder Orbs, Tier 10 Shaper Orbs. Toxic Sewer and Moon Temple are the only two real options, due to their great layout and monster density, respectively. Alternatively, you can abuse the uncompleted adjacent rules and shape up either Bog or Plateau to farm a ton of T11 layer maps. This also works for T11 Tower by shaping up Toxic Sewer. If you intend on farming either of these T11s later on, to stack up on Red Masters or simply to gain Divination cards, this will be a prime choice for you early on. For the fastest players, T16 Lairs will likely be the premier choice due to the insane amount of high value divination cards, with the Rigwald's Quill and Farrell's Fur cards, as well as the ease of sextanting the map. You should be able to hit 2 or 3 yellow sextants on it. Alternatively, T16 Towers will also be super popular due to the Div cards as well as its location on the Atlas. It's one of the two Bone Helmet areas, and as such, will supply you with high level Elder Bone Helmets or Convocation ones depending on where the Convocation Wands will be placed by GGG, of course. Now, for the last little segment, some rapid-fire farming and or crafting tips for some lower econ players that are extremely valuable in the first week and following. Delving will be highly profitable in this league, as both minion monsters as well as ailment lords will require a metric ton of specific fossils. The fossils you'll be looking for are the Bound Fossils, as well as the Corroded Fossils and the Aberrant Fossils. The best way to obtain those is to focus on the Petrified Forest area, dropping both Bound as well as Corroda Fossils and the Abyssal Depths, which will drop Bound and Aberrant Fossils. Focusing down on these two areas will likely yield a high amount of income for you, not just early on, but throughout the entire league. Additionally, keep in mind that Resonators are also extremely valuable, especially two socket ones. Leveling up additional skill gems while you're doing your usual things will provide a large amount of currency as well, if you focus on the more popular skills. On the first few days, check out the build section of PewEninja.com to figure out which skill gems are highly popular. Then, buy a ton, put them into your offhands and level them to 20. If you're feeling lucky, hit them with a corrupt and see if you can get that level 21 to sell. Don't forget about the chaos recipe. If you don't know, selling a full set of unidentified items that are between eye level 60 and 74 will yield two Chaos Orbs from any vendor. 
especially early on when exalted ore prices are still in the lower dozens, it's a great way to amass a large amount of currency. Always make sure to convert your chaos into exalts whenever possible. Exalted ore prices will rise for a long time after the start of the league, so don't worry about losing currency by converting. Rare jewelry with high amounts of resistances sell for 5 to 10 chaos during the first week, easily especially if they have a primary stat as well, such as life. Don't be afraid to throw them out on the trade side, if you got the stash space for him. 100-120% to total elemental resistances and any amount of life can add a decent sum early on. In addition to that, problem solvers, aka items with a high amount of a single stat, such as 60 plus intelligence and some life, can add between 10-30 to chaos for the right buyer early on as many players will be getting into maps with the wrong stat alignments. And with those last few tips wrapped up, I'll be ending this week's Chaos Report. I hope this video was informative and you learned something from it that you can apply to your own game. Please let me know if I missed anything or you'd have wanted me to talk about something that I might not have covered. Also, let me know what your personal predictions are going to be for these coming weeks. Furthermore, let me know if you'd like to see me cover a particular topic regarding Path of Exile. I'm always willing to explore new video types so add extra segments to this series. I also now have a Patreon due to popular demand. You can find a link to it in the description down below. Please do keep in mind, however, that the Patreon will never be a requirement and is exclusively for people that want to support me in a monetary way. I'm more than content with people simply watching and enjoying my content. Any and all support is highly appreciated. If you have any suggestions for Patreon rewards, that you guys would like to see, please let me know in the Discord's feedback channel, down below this video in the comments or on my Twitter. I read all of your comments. You can find a link to my Twitter and Discord down below in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell thingy, like or dislike the video, and check me out over on twitch.tv slash lunawolf. You can find a link to my stream down below in the description as well. And with that, thanks for watching, and keep farming those exos.